Hi everyone, Pete Snow here for Xylem Rental Solutions. Today we're talking about suction cavitation, which can often occur in suction lifts and centrifugal pumps. Also, we'll talk about net positive suction head, or NPSH for short, and the two types of NPSH, net positive suction head available and net positive suction head required. But first, here's a little background information. Fact, a hot air balloon floats in the sky. But why? Well, because it's lighter than air, which means the Earth's atmosphere has weight, which by the force of gravity is pressing down on everything all of the time, including water. Now, when we apply heat to water, water molecules begin to move rapidly, eventually overcoming the prevailing atmospheric pressure. The result? Water changes states from liquid to vapor. And at sea level, this happens at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or about 100 degrees Celsius. But do you think we could get water to boil at, say, 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 12 degrees Celsius? That's not only a possibility, it's a potential reality with a suction lift centrifugal pump, which leads us to NPSH or net positive suction head, jokingly referred to as not pumping so hot. Here's another fact. Every centrifugal pump requires a certain amount of positive pressure against the eye of the impeller to keep the water in a liquid state. In particular, when a suction lift pump is primed or pumping water, a vortex forms at the eye of the impeller and at the eye of the vortex is a low pressure area which is lower than the prevailing atmospheric pressure. And as we all know, high pressure goes to low pressure and water rises or is literally pushed by the higher pressure into the eye of the impeller. Now, the strength of that vortex is determined by the amount of resistance that the water encounters traveling through a hose to the eye of the impeller. The more the resistance, the stronger the vortex and the more the atmospheric pressure is reduced when it enters the eye of the impeller. Here's a quick example. At sea level, you start with 14.7 PSI of pressure, or about 34 feet head in imperial measurement, which is one bar, or often stated as 10.2 meters of head pressure in metric equivalent. Let's say the gravity and friction resistance on the suction side of the pump application equals about 7 PSI, or about 16 feet, which would be about 0.48 bar, 4.9 meters. Subtracting the resistance from the prevailing atmospheric pressure results in a net positive suction head available, or NPSHA, at the eye of the impeller. In this example, the NPSHA would be about 18 feet or about 5.3 meters of available positive pressure. Now, available is the key word here. We started with 34 feet of positive pressure available, but after overcoming the resistance on the suction side of the application, the net positive suction head available, or NPSHA, was reduced to 18 feet or about 5.3 meters when the water reached the vortex at the eye of the impeller. Now let's talk about the impeller. As stated earlier, each centrifugal pump requires, and that's another key word, a certain amount of positive pressure pushing against the impeller to keep the water in a liquid state. This is net positive suction head required shown here in an NPSH curve. And as you can see, the curve stays pretty level until it gets to high flow rates at the right-hand side of the curve. In this particular curve, a CD150M impeller would require about seven feet of positive pressure or about two and a half meters pushing against it to keep the water in a liquid state. That's NPSHR. Now here's the key message of this whole video. When water hits the eye of the impeller, the pressure or net positive suction head available must be greater than the net positive suction head required by the impeller. Mathematically, 
when NPSH A is greater than NPSH R, then the water stays in a liquid state. However, if NPSH A is less than NPSH R, water will turn to vapor or literally boil and bubbles will form. What happens next is what causes all the damage. As the vapor bubbles leave the eye, the veins of the impeller strike the bubbles and pressurize them. And now NPSHA is greater than NPSHR. The result is that the vapor bubbles are unable to hold their shape due to the surrounding pressure. The bubbles literally implode. Watch the sequence behind me here. The pressure pushes on the bubble that now struggles to hold its shape. The final result is that the bubble implodes and a water jet of tremendous force strikes the leading edge of the impeller vane. The resulting sound of all those implosions is that the pump sounds like it's pumping rocks. This is suction cavitation. The damage caused includes pitting to the leading edge of the impeller vanes and to the front wear plate. The pump loses efficiency and productivity. An example of an impeller that suffered suction cavitation appears behind me. That was a costly repair. So what's the solution? The solution is to reduce the amount of resistance on the suction side of the pump. Follow the logic stream here. Reducing resistance, gravity or friction, on the suction side of the pump will increase the amount of NPSHA available, which will now be more than the NPSHR required of the impeller, which will keep the water in a liquid state at the eye of the impeller, which will eliminate suction cavitation, or more simply stated, NPSHA is greater than NPSHR. But what if you walk up on an application and you hear the sound of the rocks and you think the pump might be cavitating? Here's a way you can be sure. Touch the volute, the body of the pump. If it's hot, the pump is discharge cavitating and that's a completely different situation. In that case, shut the pump down and call your pump representative for assistance. If the pump is cool to the touch, the pump is suction cavitating. And if it's a diesel powered portable pump experiencing suction cavitation, slow down the speed of the pump. This will reduce the flow and thereby the velocity of water traveling through the suction hose. And with that reduced friction from the reduced velocity, net positive suction head available, or NPSHA, will increase, which will now be more than the NPSH R or required. The sound of the rocks should go away. But if you're in the design phase of a portable pump system and due to the physical conditions of the job site, gravity and or friction resistance are high, to avoid suction cavitation, do one or both of the following. First, reduce the gravity resistance by either raising the level of water or lowering the level of the pump to get it closer to the product. Two, reduce the friction resistance by increasing the diameter of the suction hose. So here's a quick summary of everything that we've covered. NPSHA is the available pressure at the eye of the impeller. NPSHR is the required pressure based on the design of the impeller. To avoid suction cavitation, NPSHA available must always be greater than NPSHR required. Suction cavitation causes pitting at the leading edges of the impeller and on the front wear plate. And finally, manage suction cavitation by reducing resistance on the suction side of the pump application. If you'd like to have more information, contact your local Xylem Rental Solutions pump expert. For Xylem Rental Solutions, I'm Pete Snow. See you next time.